Hi, welcome back to Trilocus. I'm Wayne and the following video that you're about to watch is a film that I've made purely for entertainment. So grab yourself a cup of tea, put your feet up and enjoy. Hi, welcome to News Desk, broadcast to you from London Prime. I'm Scott Weston. These are the headlines. Update on famine relief for Xander. New drug has been released to combat space sickness. Satellite launch a success. And the Amita challenge begins. We begin today with a follow-up on the situation of Xander. Xander continues to be under martial law, but the famine relief is going really well. So far, 150 ships and different businesses have participated in the famine relief and kept the food supplies flowing. Initially, the Xander government did express their concern over the supply of medication. However, this was alleviated by the Defence Council, who dropped off all the supplies that they needed. So although the supplies of food and medicine have been flowing, the Xander government have still maintained the uh, stance of martial law. This has been backed up by the Elder Council. It is theorised that martial law will remain in place for at least a further four weeks. This will give the relief aid enough time to totally supply the colony and keep them going for the indefinite future. The Minister of Agriculture for Zelda has expressed their disbelief as to why the crops failed in the first place. However, a public inquiry will begin in earnest and once they have the answers they will publish them. The Defence Council have reported that only half a dozen stray ships wandered into the system without a permit. They were either chased off or destroyed as they pursued the um, civilian ships deploying the aid. The Defence Council experienced no losses in these situations and overall the mission so far appears to be a success. The drug company Boristin have had their latest product Vigor approved by the Medical Council. Vigor is said to alleviate all side effects of long-term space travel. These side effects are usually muscle wastage, brain damage and requiring periods of up to a week to recover from long distances. It is believed that vigour, which is absorbed into the body in only a matter of 15 minutes, alleviates these symptoms altogether. During the study, 99% of people tried had very limited muscle wastage and 100% of them had zero effects of brain damage. They also only required a period of up to three hours of full recovery. So this means then that for a local trip from Prima Segma to Rakshan, which would usually incur muscle wastage and brain damage, and then a further three or four days off to recover and recuperate, this means that with Vigor, they can be given this drug 15 minutes before they fly, and then once they have landed safely at their destination Rakshan, that will only take them an hour or two to be back to a full state of health. Vigor has been in development for over a decade, ever since the use of cryogenic chambers was banned by the Elder Council for their appalling side effects on the human body. In other news, the communication giant One Signal for All claimed that their satellite launch yesterday was a success. They have stressed though that it may take up to a week before the satellite is fully deployed and able to boost the signal as promised. Thanks to the high level AI that is on board this satellite, one signal for all claimed that it will automatically update and repair other satellites in the vicinity, thus improving the network and strengthening the signal. The hardest challenge that one signal for all claimed was strengthening the power and giving it enough boost that the signal for internet access and communication would be strong enough throughout the colonies. However, as this is a fully functional AI system, the idea is that it will learn through mistakes and build and strengthen the signal where it sees fit. Because of the high level of the artificial intelligence installed in this particular satellite, they had to give special permission from the Elder Council. The Elder Council did do so, however they did put on a lot of restrictions as the thought of something like this going wrong could be a catastrophe for the entire colony. One Signal for All 
stipulate that they have backup systems and could take the satellite down at the flick of a switch, should they need to. However, they are so confident that they have developed the right type of AI that they don't feel that they will have to. In fact, in their last press release, they did stipulate that they will be holding a question and answer session once the satellite has gone live. And finally, if you're considering to enter the Amita challenge, you've only got three days left to get your applications in. So far, 150 people have already applied for the event, which is a race from Asat to Rakshan. The rules this year have been tightened up in order to try and prevent the loss of life that has played this event so far. It's only been going five years, but in those five years, there have been a total of 15 deaths. Campaigners, called Ban the Challenge, have been campaigning vigorously for the last 12 months in the hope to try and get this event called off. They've been unsuccessful, and this has been led to the protesters gaining more momentum and lobbying Parliament. The whole crux of the event is that it is a single person challenge, so Whoever does participate, they are totally on their own and they need to take with them everything that they need. There will be no rescue ships and there will be no supply ships. Last year someone did try and cheat the system, but they were found out due to the GPS on their ship and they are now serving a 10 year jail term. The organisers this year have promised that anyone that is found to be cheating will serve an even lengthier term of 20 years. Once all participants have arrived at Rakshan, all ships will be inspected and then the stewards will award the winner accordingly. And that wraps up this edition of News Desk. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you next time. For all the latest information, please check out our website. And until next time, goodbye. This video has been written, produced and acted by myself and the characters represented are purely fictitious. Any resemblance between them and anyone living or dead is purely coincidental. And I own 100% copyright to this video. Thank you for watching.